Hello everyone, I'm so glad you stopped by. Mark your calendars because today starts a new five part series where we are making a quilt that I call Daisy Days. Now let me show you what the quilt block for this quilt is going to look like. Now I absolutely love this. I am using recycled denim in my quilt. I encourage you to break out some blue jeans that do not fit anymore or that have stains or rips or tears and go ahead and cut them up and join me in my quest to upcycle all of our denim. <laughs> but of course you don't have to. You can use any fabrics in your stash if you want to join along in the next five weeks and make this quilt with me. Also, before I forget, I want to make sure that you stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to show you how you can use the applique template for this from this pattern to make this adorable mug rug. Isn't that so cute? I painted this. That is so adorable. I'm going to show you up close what that looks like. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you how I pieced this quick fun project together. So let's talk about the pattern real quick. In this five part series, I'm gonna walk you through all the instructions on how to assemble this block. Now, if you're really crafty, you can probably make your own applique template and your own paper piecing template. And so you wouldn't have to purchase this pattern. I'm gonna give you all the measurements, the piece requirements and the fabric requirements to make the throw size. However, if you think the templates are gonna help, they'll be in the four page pattern. The pattern also includes measurements and piece counts and fabric requirements for three other size quilts. And so let's see, there's a crib, a throw, a twin, and a queen size. And so all of those measurements are broken down. I've done all the math for you. Those are in the pattern as well. But we're gonna make the throw size together I'm gonna show you here in just a second all of the things that you need to gather for your quilt if you're gonna make this with me. And then through this series, I'm gonna break it up into five videos. I'm gonna show you how to do the applique or even encourage you to break out some fabric paint if you wanna do that. But we're gonna do the applique together. And then in next week's video, we're gonna do a square and a square, which forms the center of this block. Then we're going to do some paper piecing in one of the videos and then we're going to assemble this quilt together and quilt this quilt together. So it's going to be a really fun series. I cannot wait to get started. We're going to get started today. I'm jumping right in and so let's go ahead and go over all of the things that you need to gather for this throw size quilt. Now here we are with all of the fabric requirements, the measurements and piece counts for each one of your pieces of fabric that make up your quilt top. And I'm just gonna walk you through this really fast. And at any point, feel free to pause this video and jot down all of the things that you need to gather. So let's get started with the white fabric. The white fabric is right in the center of our block. You'll need pieces that are six and a half by six and a half. You'll need 20 of these. And uh, if you were to purchase fabric, you would purchase three quarters of a yard. Of course, I encourage you to use up your scraps. And so get really scrappy with your quilt if you like. Uh, and of course, you can change out the colors. These are just the colors that I used. And so you can see a reference of where they go in your quilt blocks. So six and a half by six and a half, 20 of those. Then we're gonna move down to the blue fabric. We're using quite a bit of blue in this quilt block throughout this quilt. I used denim and I cut apart blue jeans and I had a little bit of denim left over from um, the cookbook journal. And so I'm gonna use that up in this quilt. Now for the square and square pieces, you need 40 of them. It's about a yard of fabric and you're gonna cut them five and one eighths by five and one eighths. And when we get to this portion, I'll show you exactly what that looks like on your mat using a ruler. For the diamond sashing, you'll need pieces that are four inches by nine and a half inches. You'll need 49 of those and about a yard and a half of fabric for the diamond sashing. Then we have cornerstones that I've used blue for. 
We'll need 30 of those. They are three and a half by three and a half, and it's equivalent to about a third of a yard of fabric. The yellow in my quilt block for the diamond sashing, this is a lot. <laughs> you need 196 pieces. It's about two yards of fabric, and I've cut them two and a half by six inches. Then for the binding, you'll need half a yard of fabric, and uh, I usually use 43 inch fabric, and you can cut those to two and a half inch strips, and you'll need six strips to bind your quilt. And then for the backing and the batting, if you're using 43 inch fabric, you'll need about four yards. So there are all the fabric and the batting and the binding materials that you'll need for your quilt. And again, if you need to pause this and jot down all the things that you need to gather, go ahead and do that. If you have any questions, jump down to the comment section and I'll try to be really quick in getting back with you. So now that we have all of these things in place, let's go ahead and jump to work today and start with the applique portion. As I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and jump in and start making this quilt today. So I have my 20 six and a half by six and a half inch white pieces of fabric that are already pre-cut and ready to go. And I have the page with the daisy template from the PDF pattern and we are ready to get started. Now, if you want to go ahead and make your own applique pattern for this quilt, that would be awesome. I would love to see your pictures. You can share them with me over on the Creative Crew group. There will be a link in the description box below. And uh, I would love to see the progress of your quilt if you decide to make this. So make sure you share pictures along the way. So I have my template here. Uh, if you do get this pattern, make sure that you print your pages actual size and so to double check that you can take a quick measurement because we want to make sure that everything is exact for it all to line up in this quilt to double check we're going to measure from this line to this line and it should measure six and a half inches if that measures six and a half inches you uh, are perfect and ready to go if it doesn't, you might want to check your settings and uh, adjust them until your block prints off at six and a half by six and a half. The flat ways to the flat ways. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be really, really simple. I'm going to bring over a light pad. You could use a window just like this. Now we have this on point so that it gives us a reference mark to line up our quilt block right in those lines, just like this. And that's going to center your applique on your six and a half by six and a half inch piece of fabric. So that's perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is bring in a heat erasing pen. And I am not even going to trace this whole thing. I'm going to give myself some reference marks. To line up these pieces just like this just like this I'm giving myself the flat part of the flower or the petal to line up my pieces with and because this is a heat erasing pen these marks will disappear as soon as I fuse my pieces into place so just like that. Let me show you what that looks like with the light off. <laughs> this doesn't look like much, but it's given me my reference points for the center circle and all of my petals. And I'm going to show you how I fuse those on in just a minute. Now for this project, I am using heat and bond light for my petals. I have shown in several, several videos how to trace out your template pieces. These are the templates that you would use for your petal pieces and your circle. I used my brother's scan and cut and have already <laughs> cut out all of my petal pieces for 20 flowers. And I have all of my round centers. 
So I'm going to show you right here, coming up next, what this looks like as I cut out the fabric with my scan and cut. It does save tons and tons of time. All of those have heat and bond and are cut perfectly. So let's jump to that and I'll show you just real quick how much time the cutting machine can save you. And then we're going to meet over at the iron so that I can show you how to fuse together your pieces. Here you'll see I'm using the standard cutting mat for my brother's scan and cut. This is the oldest mat that I have and it is barely tacky anymore. So I'm going to use some painter's tape to hold down my fabric. The fabric has heat and bond light on the back side and that's the part that we actually stick to the mat so the pretty side is facing up. I'm going to watch as I cut out my little petals. I'm cutting 24 at a time. And it took about three minutes to cut out 24 petals and I ran my mat through the cutter five times to get all of my flower petals cut out. So let's see, let's do the math. That's 15 minutes to cut out all of my flower petals. Once it's done cutting, I simply remove the painter's tape and lift off the bigger piece of fabric and what I have left is all of my flower petals. So the next thing we're going to do is bring this over to the ironing board and fuse these into place. Now that we have all of our pieces ready to be fused into place, you can see the shiny part, that's the adhesive. We're ready to go ahead and put these onto our fabric square. Now I'm going to try to be really careful because I don't want the iron to touch any of my reference marks before I'm ready so that I don't erase all of my little lines. So it's as simple as matching up to our little reference marks and I'm just going to tack that in place and work around the flower just like this. And I'm just really tacking that in place so that I can move everything and nothing's going to fall off my fabric. And then I'll give it a good press at the end. But these reference marks gives you the perfect placement right in the center of your square. Just like that. And now I can finish fusing everything down really well. Now, of course, you can use whatever type of fusible product that you like the most. Mine just happens to be heat and bond light. <laughs> but if you do use something different, make sure to follow the instructions on the type of fusible that you're using. Also, if you've never worked with fusible before, uh, I'll put a link to a video that I show you step by step how to use a product like Heat and Bond Light uh, while I make another project. And so you can check that out and then come back for this quilt. Now our pieces are fused into place. We are ready to do some st satin stitching. Uh, I'm gonna use a satin stitch. You could use any kind of stitch that you want to use. You do have to stitch these down though because the heat and bond uh, is not permanent until you do some kind of stitching around your applique. Now, if you really want to save time, you could just assemble your block just like this and do a straight stitch while you are quilting to uh, secure all of your pieces and quilt your quilt at the same time. So there's an idea. If the thought of doing 20 of these flowers with all of the satin stitching is a little bit daunting and that's going to be something that prevents you from making this quilt, you might want to consider uh, doing some free motion work in a straight stitch and quilt your flowers at the same time as you're stitching them down. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and thread my machine with some golden yellow orange thread and we're going to get busy doing the satin stitch.
I'm here at the machine now and we're going to go ahead and do the satin stitch around all of my applique pieces and I will fast forward this part of the video so that you can see a good portion of the satin stitch being done but before we get started I just want to let you know uh, I want to keep my fabric from puckering around my applique so I'm going to use two coffee filters as a tearaway stabilizer underneath of my quilt block just like this it acts as a uh, great stabilizer but saves you money <laughs> I'm all about that and then uh, of course I want to remind you that uh, you're going to be making 20 of these blocks now because what I plan to do is make five today and probably five tomorrow and break it down like that so I'm not all day at the machine that can get very monotonous and so I've already stitched out one of my blocks and so I wrote down all of my settings on a piece of scrap paper so that tomorrow when I come back I can set my machine up so that all of my flowers look exactly the same have you ever done that started a project and didn't write things down and when you came back <laughs> you just picked up and tried to remember but your stitches didn't look exactly the same write down all of your uh, settings on a scrap piece and keep this next to your machine while you're doing the satin stitch on all of your pieces unless you're gonna start today and do all 20 at one time <laughs> So I have that saved for tomorrow and we're ready to go ahead and get started. Uh, I do have several videos on how to do a satin stitch. If you want to check those out, if this is the first time you've ever done it, I have one video that shows a bunch of tips on doing a satin stitch. I'll put a link to that uh, video down in the description box and uh, you can check that out. I'm going to go ahead and get started and uh, we'll speed this part up. Do, 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 do. Sewing, sewing, sewing along. <laughs> I always feel like there should be music inserted into these parts where I'm not talking. <laughs> so I'm just going around all of the petals with a satin stitch. You could use a zigzag stitch or any kind of decorative stitch that you want. I feel like I've said this a lot in this video, but if you're uncomfortable doing this and you want to watch a little bit more detailed videos and tutorials on a satin stitch, there are so many on YouTube and I have a lot of videos you can check out as well. Do 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 do, do sewing along. <laughs> now we're going to go to the center circle and the circles. Take a little bit of practice, but they're a lot of fun. It's a lot of starting and stopping and rotating so that your satin stitch stays nice and smooth all the way around the edge of your circle. I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up. I hope you have a lot of fun with this uh, applique pattern and actually some good quality time with your sewing machine. Instead of doing all this stitching, just to let you know, you could paint your fabric, you could paint your little daisy, and you would not have to do the satin stitch. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of these, and then we'll meet back once I'm done. I just finished doing all the satin stitch around each one of my flower petals and the center of my flower and now we're ready to go ahead and remove the uh, coffee filter and this just tears away right from the back I used two coffee filters and so we'll have to remove them both but you can see it just tears away really easily away from the flowers and then we'll go inside the middle of each one of these flower petals and remove the filter from inside as well. And really what this does is just helps prevent your background fabric from puckering all around your applique. Might help to get some kind of pokey 
anything or some tweezers to get into the tighter areas and just lift those pieces out. And if you leave a little bit behind, it's okay. The coffee filter uh, won't hurt anything and probably will wash out of your quilt when you wash your quilt. So just like this, we'll go through and remove the coffee filter. See how easy that comes out? Now look, <laughs> I was using the same thread in the bobbin that I have on the top and I was starting to have issues so I switched over to a different thread. This is just an all-purpose white thread that I used in the bobbin and then I had a much easier time with my satin stitch. <laughs> if you ever have issues with your satin stitch, try uh, using a stronger all-purpose thread in your bobbin and then you might also have to adjust your top tension until your stitches don't pull up your bobbin thread to the top. Again, I have several videos on doing applique with a satin stitch. So if you have some free time and you have questions, jump down to the comment section, but you can also check out all the other videos on my channel and hopefully I will answer your questions in a video. <laughs> I might have already covered the answer to your question. So just like that, oh, just like that, we removed all of the freezer paper. Now that makes a big pile of a mess. <laughs> just gonna scoot that out of the way. And there we are, there is our block. Just like that. Now I have 18 more to do because this is my second one. And uh, so yeah, my plan is to each evening after work, sit down with four or five of these flower petals and a cup of coffee and some music and really enjoy some time at our machine. Uh, when you have multiple blocks, you know, 20 blocks, that's a lot. But if you love sewing uh, and you enjoy time at your machine, I think if you set aside an hour each day and just spend some time with your machine doing some satin stitches that it actually ends up being a lot of fun. Now save this because we're going to use this uh, in next week's video. I don't know if you noticed the little lines in our template. We are using that next week so do not get rid of this and uh, of course I'll be able to show you <laughs> a way to do the square in a square without those lines so don't fret if you're going to make your own template. I will show you a shortcut next week as well. So let me go ahead and put this aside. And we're going to show you real quick how I made this quick mug rug. Again, this is fabric paint. It's all quilted. I'm going to bring you along and show you how you can use this template in another project as well. Here's a really fun idea to make mug rugs with the center motif, the applique pattern. You can see here, this is the applique pattern that I traced onto white fabric. I did use some freezer paper on the back of this fabric while I was painting and that helped uh, keep the paint from seeping through the fabric and getting onto my workspace. It also stabilized the fabric uh, and kept everything nice and flat while I was painting. Now you can use all kinds of fabric paints like these that I just purchased. And for this project, I used some uh, fabric medium with regular acrylic paints and make sure to follow the directions on the back and it tells you uh, the correct ratios, uh, fabric medium to paint. And it also gives you heat setting instructions. So I've already painted my applique pattern and that's a lot of fun. Look how how bright and vibrant that is. And I've also let this dry and I've already heat set this according to the directions. Now to make this into a mug rug I have some two and a half inch squares just like this. A lot of us have these left over from projects and so I just went through and picked out some pretty ones. 
and they will go just like so on each side and you'll sew these together with a quarter inch seam allowance just like this and give that a nice press and once you're done it'll be the exact same size as your block I'll piece together this set of three and then I'll sew these two three pieces onto the center layer it with batting and a backing fabric and we'll come back once I have that all done. I just finished piecing together the mug rug top. So what I have here is the top, a thin layer of cotton batting, and a backing fabric that is at least an inch bigger than our quilt top all the way around. Once I'm done quilting this, I will trim it to an inch all the way around and use the back as my binding to finish off this little project. Now I've already glued the uh, batting to the backing fabric. I'm just using a glue stick and just enough glue to really hold this in place and so I won't have to use any pins. I'll put back the mug rug top right over top of the batting Give that a quick press, and then we're off to quilt our little mug rug. Do -do 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 -do. More music for your listening pleasure. <laughs> to quilt this, I'm going really super simple. I'm doing some stitch in the ditch work between all of my little two and a half inch pieces. And then I'm going to put on the free motion foot and do some free motion quilting around my daisy petals and around the center of my circle. So I'm keeping the quilting very simple on this project. I hope you break out your free motion foot and do some free motion quilting really soon. I really hope you enjoyed walking through this quick fun project. I love using mug rugs. I have one on my desk. It's a perfect size for a little snack and my coffee or iced tea. And because I drink lots of iced tea, you know the condensation that drips down and forms a ring on your desk. <laughs> my mug rug protects my desk from getting that little water ring and then you can throw these in the wash. And because this is fabric paint, this can go in the wash as well. So this is going to replace the mug rug that I have on my desk currently. I would love to see your mug rugs. If you make this, make sure to jump over to the Creative Crew group and share a picture with me. I think everyone loves to uh, be inspired by your pictures and your work. And so uh, I look forward to seeing some of these come through uh, on that page really soon. So here's two blocks, two applique blocks. Like I said, I have 18 left to go. If you uh, get the pattern and you're making this along, but you're making a crib size, uh, you'll have less to make. And if you're making a twin or a queen, you're gonna have a lot more to make. <laughs> but the throw size quilt is gonna be the perfect size quilt to uh, snuggle on the sofa with. It would be the perfect size quilt to throw in a backpack and take to the park to give as a gift you know someone who's getting married and what's really awesome about this pattern is even though this quilt is called daisy days and we're doing this flower applique this six and a half by six and a half square is the perfect size to swap out the daisy for let's say some chicks or bunnies or toy trucks if you want to make a crib size quilt with different applique and change your colors out change your applique and now you have a baby quilt right with a really nice uh, uh, pattern with all these diamonds in it you could uh, leave these blank and take them to a wedding reception and have people sign their names and write a quote at a wedding and then sew this into your quilt and have a wedding present uh, so many different things you could do with this pattern you could do a four patch instead of applique. You could do a nine patch. <laughs> I, I could probably go on all day with the different uh, ideas that I have for this quilt block in, in place of doing the daisy, but 
I cannot wait to see what this is going to look like in person. Cannot wait to spend time with you next Monday as we pick up and do the square and a square portion of this quilt. And until then, happy satin stitching. We'll see you next week, everybody. Bye.